Okay, I couldn't find this one uh, on a quick search through the book in Oregon, so I found something called Pinto, which is uh, going to be relatively easy for me since it looks like a small uh, Pedernalis, a Texas style point called Pedernalis. Anyway, it has a bifurcated base, and so I'll do a Pinto for this one. All right. Let's see. Now the book I'm using, since I always forget to show the book in every video, because I get questions on every video, this is the book. All right. Now, this book here, this hardcover, I don't think is still in print, so you have to buy it in Kindle format. Okay. But this is where I'm getting the information for this point. And uh, the old justice books are becoming extremely popular. When I first started napping, everyone that I talked to said, said what? No justice? Who? But now everyone's buying them, so. Just my luck. I recommend a book and it's no longer in print because <laughs> there's I don't know I guess it's you make more money if you offer the Kindle version I don't know yeah it's really eating up that antler now in other in other videos that I've seen I don't know if it's me, but it seems like they have such an easy time using antler. And it never seems to get eaten up. And I don't know if it's because I'm not doing it right or I'm just working some really, really tough stone. Or maybe both. How's that? Maybe there's a better way to do this. It doesn't eat up eat up the bits. Have a hard time doing the hammer stone with the gloves on. The delicate hammer stone. The big stuff is easy, but the delicate hammer stone work is hard for me with the gloves on. Okay, I gotta start thinking about forming the base. I 
because the blade is pretty much done. I, mean, I probably will send some more flakes in. Yeah, I'll I'll take down this edge, make a duller, and do another pass to make it fully flaked. I guess. But right now I've got to figure out uh, the proportions of this base, and then I'll. I'll take down the uh, blade after. was taken right there nice with right light you can't get a nice feathering like that it would have stopped more abruptly so this is better than rhyolite it's still really tough but it's not nearly as tough to flake as rhyolite But it's, it is up there with the tough stuff. What's good about having barbs is that you can, you know, take in the corners and then dry flakes inward to thin it down and stuff. see that flake taken from inside that depression and then, then it uh, thinned it out really well there this one didn't travel quite like I wanted it was supposed to go more into that mass but I wasn't really thinking too much about making it travel I forgot to check. So this is really lumpy and stuff here, so I'm going to try to drive a flake from the edge instead of from this concavity. 
instead of from the concavity I missed my chance so now I gotta come in from the edge to get rid of some of this and uh, I remember saying I was gonna work on the base first but I, I think I really wanted to get rid of this before I do the base This edge looks kind of bad. I can clean that up later. What I was looking for is to clean this up here. Okay. I think I need to wrap these with some sort of uh, leather or something because it digs into my hand too much when I use these. Yeah, I prefer this one because it has a, a, a nice rounded handle that I can grip easily. This is a little bit too narrow for this. Let's see. It's eating up the uh, it's it's really biting into this. So I gotta use something thicker. question on uh, stone pressure flakers. I've got one here. This is a stone pressure flaker. Uh, I can use it for an abrader too. Th this is rhyolite. I use it for abrading the inside of notches if I need to. This really gets This, this stuff is really eating into the rhyolite too. See how that's getting really powdery? That's the rhyolite. Oh yeah, I was asked about stone pressure flakers in one of the earlier comments in one of the other videos 
and I can use a stone pressure flaker for this but uh, this is mainly for softer stones and heat treated material because if I use it on this let's see it actually wears out the stone here before it will wear out the stone here I mean I can remove some flakes but it tends to crush this and chip that uh, it works better if the workpiece has a more uh, flexible type of stone like a high quality flint or a heat treated shirt And I used to get a lot of advice in the beginning uh, telling me I should wear gloves a lot. And why don't I wear gloves and why don't I wear this or that? It's because, as you can see in these videos, I remove the gloves and put them back on and take them off and put them back on. Because it's very subtle. You've got to get the right, just the right amount of feedback to know how to hit so you don't get step fractures. And even though I can get really good at using the gloves and flint napping, again, I've got to waste material to get good at using the gloves, getting the feedback through the gloves, wearing tight gloves, and um, you know, replacing the gloves often because uh, they do get worn out uh, quickly. Uh, it's just one of those maintenance items that I don't like to deal with. But I'll use them in, in these videos just so that you guys can see. When it starts to get thin, you get these little fingernail step fractures. I don't know if you can see. Okay, there we go. See those? I gotta clear those off somehow if I want to go to sleep early and not worry about those and you know, flip nap in my sleep how to get rid of those. <laughs> Never happens to other nappers, I know. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do the base. Yeah, I'm reaching the limit on that one, so let's see. Damn, I just jab. Let's 
see, where's my... Alright, here we go. Let's see if I can... This is a new one that I've got. The newest. Ulna bone. It's too long. I got. I'm holding it like this, so it's it's rotating. Shorter one might work, but this is really skinny. Skinnier than the other one. I don't want to cut this one off. Maybe I can use. See, there's a thick end on this one and a thin end. I might be able to use a thick end. Yeah, it's just eating the bone for a little snack. What seems like a real thin edge is still eating the. It's wearing the bone down really fast. Let me see. I'm going to try this one more time. See if we can get this to cooperate. Sorry about that, guys. I'm having it extremely close for this video because I noticed I was too far away in the other ones, but obviously too close. So now it's a little bit further away. I should it should be it should be better. Hopefully it won't drop you guys into the debitage pile. Okay, better. This is really strong antler. Even so, even if, when it's really strong, it does that. If you're working tough stone.
and I would say about, I don't know, maybe half the antlers you dry carefully will be very strong like this one. The other half will be will be fine for uh, softer material. But a lot of you guys ask about how did the Indians work with extremely tough stone. And um, you just have to know your material. You have to use a lot of different pieces of bone, a lot of different pieces of antler, and find out which ones are the strongest. And if you're lucky enough to get something that works, uh, your points will look nice. If you can't find anything that works, your points will look kind of crude. Of course, it does also matter how skillful the napper is. And not clumsy like me. But... Uh, it, it has also a lot to do with the tools. Okay. Like, I'm lucky here, it's very dry, so my antlers and stuff, as long as it's not raining out, and I have napped when it was drizzling, and it didn't work out very well, but if the, uh, as long as it's dry, I mean, as long as it's not raining here, the weather is very dry. And uh, the antlers dry out really nice. You can probably pick at that with a, a metal pick, but I'm not going to use anything metal on this one. Get that to pop out. I don't know if I was even in the frame for that one. Let's see, 28 minutes. I think I'm just going to leave it. I can dress up the edges a little bit better and uh, you know maybe even drive a couple of flakes in to take care of those step fractures. I could probably drive in a long flake here and wipe that out pretty much here in the middle. Maybe take another one from the side. You know these side flakes can come in and take those off if I'm lucky. But I'm just going to leave it that way. Let's see how close I am before I run out of time. Okay, so these are the Pinto type points. Pretty close, I guess. It's the base that matters, pretty much. Uh, I notice there's a lot of uh, concavity on the edges, but I think it's due to resharpening. Uh, this looks more like a first stage, where the it's more rounded, and resharpening makes them concave like this so but what I could do 
Oops. Since uh, the real ones have concave edges, what I could do is I could take more off the edges here, thicken that up, and then drive more flakes in to make it look prettier. I might do that uh, when I send off this point to uh, my friend who provided the stone. But there you go. I'm going to stop there. I said I was going to compare these two, the flaking on these two. Aluminum here and then antler on this one. Okay.